We toured the entire East Coast and Midwest. And while we were in Chicago for a performance at our boy Ron Artest's birthday party, an interview I did in the source came out. I picked up a copy in the Chicago airport when we landed. The source put me on the cover, my first magazine cover as a solo artist. In the interview, the writer, Shaheen Reed, asked about my problem with Jay-Z, referencing an online interview in which they asked if I liked Jay-Z. No, he's a bitch boy. He talking and don't live it, I said. I elaborated for the source. Jay-Z has a quote in his song, Money Cash Holes, where he claims, New York been soft ever since Snoop came through and crushed the buildings. I'm trying to restore the feelings. But Jay was nowhere to be found when that drama popped off between Mob Deep, Dog Pound, Tupac, and Biggie. That was our little personal beef, not a coastal war. Jay-Z ain't had shit to say when it was on, and he was getting this. Him and Nas. Mob Deep and Biggie were the only ones from New York active in that situation. So Jay-Z is a bitch-ass nigga for making that quote in his lyrics. Yeah, it was on now. Calls started coming in from industry folks when I arrived back in New York. Jay-Z is upset because of what you said about him. I was like, and? Am I supposed to give a fuck? Fuck him. I didn't call him a bitch boy to make him happy. I did it to provoke him to start dissing me. And I said it because it's the truth. The whole rap world was talking about me calling Jay-Z a bitch. Radio, magazines, websites, and all. It was only a matter of time before Bitch Boy came back at me with something. And that was exactly what I wanted. I knew most of the shooters and live wires from Jay-Z's hood and the other two projects near Marcy, Tompkins, and Sumner. So I already knew who Jay-Z would run to. That's my advantage over him. That's how I knew he didn't live what he rapped. But Jay didn't realize I had those connections. My nigga E. Money Bags went to high school with Jay. And Bags' sister is married to Sauce Money, who is one of Jay-Z's artists. I had connections through the whole borough of Brooklyn, from Red Hook, Cypress, and Pink Houses to Brownsville, Crown Heights, and Bed-Stuy. When I openly expressed my opinion of Jay-Z to the world, it opened up the floodgates on him. Suddenly... Several different rappers started openly saying the same things about him, from Fat Joe to The Locks and more. Even LL Cool J started firing shots at Jay. Jay has a line in one of his songs that goes, First the fat boys break up, now every day I wake up, somebody got a problem with Hove. The song is called Ain't No Love or some bitch boy shit like that. Let me be clear. Jay-Z makes excellent music. I really liked a lot of his stuff, but this was not about his music, and it had nothing to do with jealousy or envy. This was about the man behind all that, Sean Carter, a.k.a. Bozo the Clown. My situation with that dude wasn't a rap battle. It was personal. My man Gotti from QB and I was sitting in the truck when a new Jay-Z song called Takeover came on the radio. The beat was hot, so we turned it up and heard Jay-Z dissing Nas and me. I was wondering what was taking Bitch Boy so long. I thought, let the games begin. The radio station Hot 97 was promoting its annual Summer Jam concert at Nassau Coliseum. Marv Deep wasn't performing, so we paid it no mind. The June day of Summer Jam, Havoc was in the basement in Freeport making beats while the rest of the crew was in the living room playing 007 on PlayStation in two-player mode. I got a phone call from Ella G, who was at Summer Jam with a bunch of his friends from Brooklyn. Yo, P, this bitch-ass nigga just tried to play you during his show. G said. What you mean? I asked. Jay-Z, I told you that picture was going to come back to haunt you one day. G said. Jay had the picture of you when you was a kid dressed like Michael Jackson up on the screen. I started laughing. It sounded funny as hell. I had to admit. That was a good joke. In the song, Takeover, Jay had a line about me. You was a ballerina. I got the pictures. I seen you. Drop shook ones, then you change your demeanor. We don't believe you. You need more people. But anybody who went to my grandmother's dance school has seen a picture of me when I was eight years old dressed like Michael Jackson. 
Jay-Z couldn't confront the issue that started our whole drama, so he diverted the people's attention with a joke. The debate was about Jay not being active in the rap beef with Snoop and Tupac and how he waited years until Tupac and Biggie were murdered to start running his lips about New York being soft ever since Snoop came through and crushed the buildings. I'm trying to restore the feelings. That's the reality that Jay has to deal with when we all get tired of laughing at me in 1982, eight years old, dressed like Mike. But I did like the tactic that Jay used. It was pretty slick. On a Friday night the following winter, Jay-Z went on Funkmaster Flex's Hot 97 radio show, freestyling with his new recruits, Beanie Siegel, Young Guns, and Freeway. Balls and Hooks, Green Eyes, E-Money Bags, Majesty and I were at the Music Palace studio. Jay's boys sounded real good until I heard Beanie take an indirect shot at Mob Deep. Something about, I creep on your quiet storm. To top it off, Jay had some nigga named H Money Bags rhyming with them. E Money Bags started spazzing. I had a private number to the radio station, and after about 80 rings, somebody picked up. Yo, this is Prodigy, I said. Let me speak to Jay Z. Jay just got on the elevator and left. You just missed him. The person on the phone said. Go catch him and tell him Prodigy on the phone. Okay, I'm going to try. Hold on. Five minutes later, Jay got on the phone. What's up? Jay said. Yeah, what up, nigga? I said. Hold on, somebody want to talk to you. Bags was asking for the phone, so I handed it over. Yo, what's up? It's E Money Bags. How you got some dude up there using my name? You know me, nigga. Who the fuck is H Money Bags? So, what are you trying to say? Jay asked. What am I trying to say? You know what the fuck time it is with me, nigga. Don't try to act like you don't know how I rock. Bags said. Bags went to high school with Jay, and they know each other very well. This is what you called me for? Jay replied. Oh, now you acting tough. Bags said. You tough now? You know I'm going to see you now, right? Say no more then, Jay said. Say no more? All right, so when I see you, you know what it is. Say no more. Jay said. Heading back to the hotel room on Sunset, I thought, I wonder if Lil' Kim and them are okay. So I called Kim, and she said that I should come hang out at a hotel later. Twin, DeLorean, Mr. Bars, Free High, Draws, Gotti and I hopped into a van to the Swiss Hotel by the Beverly Center Mall with Kim and our friends were drinking frozen apple martinis in a penthouse suite. In her room with D-Rock, Gutter, C's, Banger, and other junior mafia members, plus five of Kim's female friends. Her hotel room was crowded, so Free High got one of her girlfriend's numbers, and then we left. On our way out of the lobby downstairs, Kim's hairstylist ran out of the elevator calling my name. P, Kim wants you to come back upstairs. I told my boys to bounce and send the van back to pick me up later. Back inside Kim's room, I noticed that Junior Mafia was gone, and it was just Kim and her girlfriends plus the hairstylist. Kim poured me another apple martini, and we stepped onto the balcony to talk privately. I grabbed Kim by the waist and started kissing on her neck. I thought about Mary J. Blige and decided to play this situation differently. Stop, not right now, Kim said. There are too many people up here. I understood what she meant, but I kept trying to sex her right there on the balcony. After five minutes of us failing on each other, I fell back because it was obvious she wasn't trying to let me hit right then and there. But the thing she told me let me know for sure that I can get with her at some other time. After an HNIC promo tour throughout the tri-state area and down the East Coast in October 2001, I took a bunch of my boys to Puffy's Restaurant, Justin's, on 21st Street in Manhattan, down the block from Soundtrack Studios. Drinking champagne while checking out the scene, the rapper Queenpin spotted me and asked me to dance. 
more the type to lurk in the cut, watching my surroundings. I wasn't big on dancing. But for Queen Pen, I made an exception. While we were grinding on each other, she started sucking and tongue kissing my ear. I was a bit shocked. We had done a song together a year or two earlier, but it was strictly professional. After she molested my ear, the DJ made an announcement. Big shout out to Jay-Z and Jermaine Dupree up in the spot. I see y'all. I walked over to my people. Where's Jay-Z? I asked, surveying the shadows of Justin's. I don't see him. So we lined the front door of Justin's on both sides. We weren't going to let Jay-Z leave without dealing with us first. Yo, P, we going to beat the lips off Jay face as soon as we see him. Godfather Nitty and Nitty's cousin Kiko all assured me. Kiko had a gun on him and wanted to shoot Jay. No, it's not that serious, I said. We just going to beat him up. Going to pull that gun out. Through the crowd, I saw Jay and Jermaine walking with three bodyguards towards us. Jermaine Dupree was aware of my beef with Jay and visibly shook. Started speed walking with his bodyguards when he saw me. He quickly hightailed it out the door. Jay-Z spotted us lined up at the door waiting for him. Then from about two yards away, he extended his hand to shake mine. It ain't no beef, Jay said. It's just music, man. No drama. Oh, yeah? I said, shaking his hand. I just wish you would have spoken to me before you said those things about me in the sauce, he said. But it ain't no beef, all right? Yeah, okay, cool, I said, and let him walk out the club. Keep in mind that I let him walk out. Queenpin is my witness. I could have changed Jay's future that night, but I chose not to. Jay put the white flag up, and his cop-out made me instantly realize that he wasn't no threat. He's just a big stuffed animal, a camel to be exact. I got serious beef for real gangsters. Jay's just a waste of my time.